On the 21st of November 1994, the Stone Roses released the first single from their album, Second Coming, a song called Love Spreads. Hitting number two in the charts, it was the highest charting single ever for the band, and today we are going to take a deep dive below the surface to figure out exactly how many and what kind of tracks they recorded to create the incredible blues rock sound of this song. Now, while on previous videos where we broke down songs into their individual stems to kind of establish what ingredients went into a song, they've always been Oasis songs, so there's always been a little bit of guesswork trying to figure out who played what. In the case of the Stone Roses, however, they were much, much more thorough. If you have a look in the liner notes, on the very back page, they give very, very specific credits detailing who played tambourine on an individual track or even castanets. So thankfully, we can establish on virtually every track exactly who played what. So let's start in the most obvious place, the drums. There can only be one contender for the drums. Of course, it's Rennie. But he didn't record just one drum track. At 4 minutes 10 in the song, you can hear Rennie's drum overdubs come in. There is a second drum part. Let me put you in the picture. Let me show you what I mean. Next, buried deep down in the mix, there is a shaker. It could be a shaker egg, I'm not sure. It could be like a rain stick but it's there, it's very low in the mix, and once again, if you look in the credits, it says, just underneath keyboards and castanets, percussion, Rennie. And as he's the only person credited with just percussion, we can quite confidently say, track three, shaker, Rennie. Next up, it's the last of the percussion instruments, it's a tambourine. And this time, the liner notes clearly tell us that the tambourine on Love Spreads is played by someone called Nick. Who's Nick? Nick is Nick Bryan, a mixing engineer at Rockfield Studios, the same place where Oasis recorded What's the Story Morning Glory. And for this song, Nick stepped into the booth and recorded the tambourine. Next up, we have the bass guitar, and that of course is played by Gary Mornfield, Manny. Now, it's time for the biggest section of all, and it will surprise nobody to hear that that is the guitars. So, opening up in a slightly different tuning to some of the other guitars, we have the electric slide and lead guitar, played of course by John Squire. Next up we have a second track of buried slide guitar movements. This is on a separate stem to the main quite heavy riff. It's a, it's a bit of a cleaner sound. This kicks in at 3 minutes 16. Buried slide guitar overdubs, John Squire. Yeah. Next up, we have a double track of John Squire's main lead guitar part. It's similar in almost every aspect, but there are tiny little licks and movements that are either missed out or slightly different, so we know it is a separate track. But John Squire being the fairly accurate and precise musician that he is, it's almost identical all the way through. Next up, 
Next up we have, surprise surprise, another guitar track. We have John Squire's kind of softer sound, it's a crunch rhythm guitar track. He's playing with a funk style here, lots of snappy left hand muting and it kind of jumps in between the louder, heavier kind of swamp rock riffs. So he'll kind of play a big riff and then one of these little funk chords will cut through. Next we have the double track of those softer crunch funk stabs. The first track of them is panned to the left and this second track of them is panned to the right. They're very, very similar. Again, just minute differences. Next up, we have a clean guitar track that seems to have some kind of timed phaser or a certain kind of auto wire on it, something like that. This kicks in at 4 minutes 33 in the song as part of the final outro build-up. And finally, the last of the guitar tracks, we have a clean, very trebly lead guitar part that kicks in about 5 minutes and 3 seconds into the song as the outro is reaching its crescendo. Next up we have, interestingly for the Stone Roses, a piano track. This kicks in at about 4 minutes 12 and it's played by producer Simon Dawson. Let me put you in the picture, let me show you what I mean. Next up we have lead vocals and of course everyone recognises that voice, it's Ian Brown. Wait there for the nails I forgive you boy I will prevail Now producer Simon Dawson who played the piano part on this song also gets a lot of credit for getting quite a interesting round rich sound out of Ian Brown's sometimes flat vocals and part of how he did that on this song was by recording a double track of all the lead vocals, one panned mostly left and one panned mostly right. When it came to double tracking, Ian Brown was very accurate and he replicated almost exactly what he did on the lead track. But there is the odd moment here and there in the tracks where you can hear the double track go out of sync very slightly with the main track. I'm hiding in the trees with a picnic, she's over there, yeah, yeah. And next we come to the backing vocals section. Now, in the liner notes, all of the Stone Roses are credited with backing vocals, but thankfully again, it's very specific. So John Squire and Manny sang on tightrope only, and it says that Rennie was the backing vocalist for everything else. Now, anyone who's watched the special features on the Made of Stone documentary can hear that some of Rennie's backing vocals there are fantastic. Some of his harmonies are very, very accurate and they sound brilliant. So I really wonder why some of the backing vocals on this track are so horribly out of tune when you listen to them, especially in isolation. I had a dream, I've seen the light, don't put it out, but she's all right. Yes. Now, whoever this backing vocalist is, this is not them performing anywhere near their best. The liner notes, however, suggest that this is probably Rennie. Now, Rennie actually quit the Stone Roses four months after Second Coming was released, so it's not unfair to assume that they were fighting a lot of the time during the recording. It's clear from the evidence of Made of Stone and from the previous Stone Roses album that Rennie really could sing. So what I think happened was this. I think they got a very, very average backing vocals take and there was a fight. Rennie left and didn't come back and I think they decided to just 
use the take they had and bury it deep down in the mix. I could be wrong about that, and if anyone knows the reason that the backing vocals are so wonky on this song, please tell me in the comments. Next up, we have some very, very deep backing vocals, which are obviously Ian Brown. Having listened to John Squire's solo albums, I know what his voice sounds like. I know Rennie's voice is quite high. I've no idea what Manny's voice sounds like, but the liner notes say he only sang on tightrope anyway, so this is Ian Brown. The Messiah is my sister, ain't no king, man, she's my queen. And last of all, we have the final backing vocal track, which again is very clearly Ian Brown singing some counterpoint melodies towards the end of the outro. And that's it. That's all the tracks I could hear. 18 different stems. But every time I do one of these videos, some of you golden-eared watchers come back and say, I can also hear this. I can also hear that. So let me know in the comments whatever else you can hear. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.